and welcome to TPI. My name is Simisela Okai, and thank you for joining us for today's episode of our special talk series, Everyday Woman. This is a safe space that you can come to and find hope for the everyday issues that you might be facing. Now, today's program is all about restoring broken marriages. Many of you watching are unfortunately walking through hard times in your marriage, whether it's infidelity or it's a communication breakdown. Now, it's our hope that by watching this, you will be armed with tools to not just survive your marriage, but thrive in it. We have a panel of guests ready to help you. We have, of course, my co-host, Eric Lenny. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and we have the founder of the Relationship Talk podcast, Dana Shea Williams. Yeah. And we also have a professor and founder of two private counseling practices, mm -hmm. including a faith-based one, Dr. Yep. Cyrus Williams. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Thank you for having me. Both of you. Well, we're gonna jump right in because I know people are really interested. So, Dina, I'm gonna start with you. Now, you've been married for 24 years, mm -hmm. even though you look like you probably <laughs> about 20, well, but... <laughs> But you, you've seen, your marriage has had some ups and downs, and you've experienced infidelity on both sides. Right. So share a little bit about your experience and how you all went through it. Yeah, well, we got married super young, as you mentioned. You know, I was 18, my husband was 21. We knew nothing about mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. okay? And so we got married, and I think we just really did not understand the gravity of what marriage was gonna require from us. And we also didn't have good boundaries in the beginning of our marriage. So there were certain things that we didn't put in place that really should have been put in place from the beginning that we didn't do. And so the enemy came and you know we fell. And it's interesting because I don't think most people who who commit adultery, most people never think that they could do that. Mm -hmm. That was at least my understanding. Like, I ne I'm a loyal friend, you know, loyalty is, is, you know, very important to me, but I fell. And the same weekend, unfortunately, my husband also had an affair. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was like, well, mine, I'm not gonna say nothing about mine, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I didn't say anything for years because mine was just kind of a one thing, it, you know, not to make it right, but it was just kind of like a, a one-time thing and it was over after that. Never talked to that person again. Have not talked to that person in 20, however many years, you know. Um, my husband's story was a little different, you know, and he continued to struggle through in our marriage. And so it just really, when you go through infidelity, it makes you question everything about yourself, your self-worth, your identity, your purpose. I mean, suicidal ideation, all of it, you know, not for everyone, obviously, but these are just some of the things that we went through. Um, and so, you know, I, it, looking back from where we were then to where we are today, people see where we are today and I'm like, there's a whole mm -hmm. lot in mm -hmm. the middle that right. happened in order yeah. for us to get to where we are today. Yeah. That's true. Now, mm -hmm. Dr. Cyrus, it's quite unique because you were involved in their uh, counseling through Absolutely. Rafa Counseling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dana and Sean. So why do you think they were able to get through infidelity and everything that happened, right. you know, when a lot of marriages don't make it, what made theirs different? This story is, is the best part of the story is they're, they're both solid Christians and you can't underestimate that, right? So we have a foundation to kind of work with. We have a higher calling, right? Um, one of the things that was clear is that at the time, Dana was trying to figure out, you know, what she needs to do but she was clear that she wasn't going to run out of this without consulting God and doing the work. And um, Sean was ready to work also. So it's a big difference when you can have that faith foundation. Now, I work with people, non-faith and faith foundation, but it's a big difference when you feel like you need to make sure that this is the thing for you to do. Like God wants you to, to leave, not just your flesh wants you to leave, even though you have every right to leave, to have that next level of God to answer to and not just your flesh or your husband or your family, that makes it much easier job on me because I can help to solidify that relationship with God and then we just do the work. And then we're both ready to work. Well, Sean was ready to work. Uh -oh. And uh -oh. um, you have a betrayed wife <laughs> mm. who was exhibiting everything she needed to do. Yeah. She was angry. She was not sure. So we had to make sure that she was taken care of. And most of the time at this point in crisis, this crisis point, you got you to gotta work with the husband because right now we're not doing any couples work. It's so individual. We gotta, yeah, so we have to get him stabilized. Mm -hmm. uh, Want to get her to, to figure out what in the world just happened to her? 
and then after a while, we're going to put them back together and we're going to do the hard work. That's good. Now, Dana, you, you know, we were talking earlier and you mentioned how God told you something mm -hmm. like, okay, either I stay. Yeah, he mm -hmm. said, and I remember he said, if you stay, I will bless you. If you go, I will bless you. Mm -hmm. Because I, there is a torment, you know, like, mm -hmm. what am I supposed to do here? And even though as a believer, we know that we have that out, like the Bible does give you that out, if you will, mm -hmm. four cases of infidelity. But I just wanted, I just had, I don't know why, like I wasn't seeing anything with my natural eyes, but I just believed that God could do something miraculous here. So there was like that little shard of of hope mm -hmm. that I was just mm -hmm. kind of hanging on to, but there had gotten to the point where I was like, okay, Lord, I can't keep going back and forth. It, I'm either going to stay or I'm going to go. And that's when I heard the Lord give me that, that word. And that was super comforting to me because I didn't fear anymore of like making the wrong decision. It was like, okay, you know what? This has been a lot, you know? And, and I think God's grace would have for sure blessed me if I would have left my marriage. But when I see what we have today, I'm so glad that I stayed. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Cyrus, is there a situation where someone needs to leave? Like, what, in what situation do you, right. would you say you need to separate at well, this time? Certainly, if there's any physical violence or anything, that's a no-brainer. You gotta leave. Um, I, I try hard for people not to leave the house, separate in the house. Want to do that? Once you leave the house, you got a whole bunch of other other things going on, right? It's hard to leave the house and come back. So I try really hard for folks not to. So um, there are times when people just continue to be emotionally abused. Um, the the uh, spouse is not working. Um, the spouse is blaming. So those are times when we're like, you know, you guys are not ready. One person is not ready, definitely. Mm -hmm. So um, that might be a time for them to leave. Um, if in the house is still some abuse going on, emotional uh, abuse and just apathy and, you know, she's got to get over it. She'll be back. Or I'm just going to give her a couple of weeks and she'll be fine. That's not helpful. Um, and if that's what I'm seeing, then there might be time away, you know, going to someone's house for a couple of weeks or whatever and doing intensive work. But I don't want anyone to be abused in their house. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to get into a lot more of this after the break. I know a lot of insights have been given. Um, after the break, we're gonna get into the specifics of what to do once a betrayal takes place. Now this is for both men and women. So wives and husbands, you don't wanna miss this. Stay with us. Your Turning Point experience doesn't have to end when the program is over. Follow us on your favorite social media. TPI's Everyday Woman. Now, before the break, we talked about the pain of infidelity and its impact on a marriage. Now, we want to help you with tools to overcome it if it's unfortunately something you're facing. Now, my first question, Dr. Cyrus, um, you know, someone has just discovered their spouse is cheating. Um, you know, there's the pain of it. So what exactly should they do? Like, they've just opened the letter or saw the evidence. Right, right. What should they do? I can tell you that they need to find a trusted confidant, one, not many, um, make good decisions. Um, you, you know, you're overwhelmed with all these emotions. Find a confidant, talk to them, um, think about a counseling session, um, try really hard not to share to kids and um, Facebook. To, uh, Facebook and all of that. None of, none of that stuff. Because you can't bring that back. Okay. Once yeah. you stop working on the relationship, you can't bring that back. So you want to uh, reach out to a pastor, reach out to a professional counselor. Um, you want to find some things. And then you have to set boundaries with, with the, the husband in this case. Now, do right? you confront the person? or well, do absolutely. you? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You confront. Um, I would be careful because it can get physical. I mean, it's just the truth of it. It can get physical. You got to be careful with that. Um, you got to have your own integrity, right? Um, and then set some boundaries. And the first boundary for me um, 
we don't need to be in the same bed. We, I need some space. I need some time to kind of figure out what the heck is going on and what I need to do next. So that's important. Um, the boundaries have to stop right then, that day. The boundaries are, this is what you're not going to do, right? You're not going to come talking to me and asking me questions, pestering me and all that. I need to do that. The other part is I want the truth and I want the truth one time. Yeah. Men get in trouble because they hold the truth. They continue to drip it out every day or it's discovered. Okay. So we get we get some ground made, right? Some good hard work and ground made. And then three weeks later, this comes out. Three weeks later, that comes out. So um, the person who cheated needs to go see a counselor pretty quickly and make sure that they're not making these mistakes. The mistakes are to not take it seriously, try to wait her out, um, try to uh, make her forgive you, try to browbeat her with the Bible. Um, all those things are the mistakes that people make. Um, so they need to go get some help also. Right. Um, real quick, real quick. Well, I have a, well, kind of a two-part question. Mm -hmm. How important is one individual counseling? Because mm -hmm. there's, you know, you said at one point there's, it's hard to do couples counseling at this point. Yeah. But for you, Dana, you said the change came when your husband started going to counseling on his own because you weren't really trying to hear it. How did that change for you? Right. I mean, I think, you know, when you are, to, to your point, Dr. Mm -hmm. Williams, I think mm -hmm. when you are so fragile, when you first find mm -hmm. out about an affair, everyone wants to, like, get to restoration right away. Right. But there's a lot that has to happen between the discovery and the restoration. Mm -hmm. So I had a cold heart at that point. You know, I was like, I'll go with you, you know, to a couple of sessions. Mm -hmm. I had been trying to get my husband to go to counseling for years, and he was like, no, I'm good, I don't need it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, I'm gonna leave, mm -hmm. basically is how that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and that was my boundary, is mm -hmm. I will not continue in this process unless you get some help. And so he started going, I think we went to like one or two sessions initially, mm -hmm. Um, and then I was like, I don't want to be here. You know what I mean? Like, this is not my problem. This is your problem. And so I'm not going to be here. And so he continued to go on his own every week, self-pay. And that's when I started being like, huh. You know, because I had heard it all before. I had heard the sorries. I had I'd done all that before. I heard all that. But, like, when he started really making some changes and then when he started accepting responsibility, like, he started saying things that I had never heard before. Mm -hmm. He started taking it more seriously. He started putting his own boundaries in place. That's when I was like, okay. So, like, when I'm talking to couples, I'm always like, repentance is tangible. Like, some, somebody just saying, I'm sorry. Okay, that's nice. But, like, the work of repentance, you can see. You can see that work. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't seen that work prior. Now I did see the fruit of that work, and I think that's what made the big difference. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're a relationship coach. You know, having been through it personally, and now you're helping others go through that, how's that been for you on the, the other side of it? It's so redeeming. You know, mm -hmm. I knew that, like, again, when I, heard, when I heard the Lord say, if you stay, I will bless you. If you go, I'll bless you. I didn't know it back then that there was going to be fruit that came from my decision to stay. But now I look at, you know, what the enemy meant for evil, God has meant for good. And I have been able to talk to so many couples and be able to help them in their darkest time because I've been through it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just grateful. Of course, I wouldn't want to go through all that mess again. Yeah. But it's like, it's been redeemed. Redemptive. Redemptive. And I'm super grateful that That's God good. has been able to use our story to help other couples. That's good. Now, Dr. Sarah, so you mm -hmm. mentioned something before when we were talking mm -hmm. that, um, you know, a lot of men and women, mm -hmm. you know, after the infidelity has happened, mm -hmm. it's been confronted, they've gone to see counselors. Right. Then it's like, okay, can you get over it now? Like right. six right. months? Right. How right. long does it take? Right. And listen, uh, people don't want to hear this. The men don't want to hear this, but it's going to take three years. Right, and that's just, it's not an arbitrary wor a number. It's gonna be three years. Um, so you have to be ready to do work for a long time. Now it's not gonna be as intense as the first one month, six month, one year, but certainly it's gonna be a long time. Trust has to come from consistency and accountability. Mm -hmm. You can't get lost anymore. You can't be out of pocket anymore. You can't do any of that stuff. Um, it's gonna take a long time. And oftentimes uh, men get 
um, anxious, they get frustrated, and they actually quit because it's been a year and she hasn't fully forgiven me. And she's still watching me every day. She's still pulling my phone every day. And listen, those are the consequences of your behavior. So, you know, they don't hear me until that year comes around. And they're like, this is never going to end. What am I going to do? I'm like, I told you it's going to take a long while. You got to hang in there. Amen. Well, mm. this is such a great conversation. I hate to end the segment, but I really believe this is helping a lot of couples. Don't go away because after the break, we'll be talking about some other things besides infidelity that is plaguing marriages, like communication breakdown. If this sounds like something that may help you or someone you know, please share this program with them. Don't go anywhere because we have more for you after the break. Call us at 0300-140-0067 or visit cbneurope.com forward slash TPI. Welcome back to TPI's Everyday Woman. We're talking about marriage and specifically ways to get a healthy marriage if yours is breaking down. We're going to get to a time of ministry at the end, but first let's talk about relationship injuries and why some couples just stop getting along. Now, Dr. Cyrus, you talk about mistakes that couples make and one particularly in communication. Right. So what are some things, how do people damage one another in their communication? Well, um, it comes down to not the grace and mercy is always the problem, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, people not giving each other a break when we say and do things um, that that are not well done, right? <laughs> Just leave it at that. Um, we have to learn how to talk better, um, disagree better. I, I use the word fellowship like heated fellowship. We have to <laughs> understand how to talk when we're upset and, and be respectful and regard each other. Um, the friendship is the basic of the relationship. Everybody comes to my office asking about um, conflict resolution and all that, but it's really the friendship. We got to get back to the courtship and the friendship. And if we get back to that, the foundation of the relationship, then a lot of these other um, issues don't happen as often. You just have to be a couple who doesn't want to damage each other. That's mm -hmm. a choice. That's mm -hmm. a choice. And how do you recover from that if there is damage? Listen, there, there's there's a master couple and a disaster couple, right? They're the same people, right? They're the same couples. The master couple repairs quickly, right? They will say, I'm sorry I said it that way. I, uh, I apologize for what I, I've done. I take accountability. Uh, responsibility for the things I said. Those are the different relationships. The other folks will go the separate way and not try to repair. So you have to repair quickly. You know, the quicker you repair, the better you can move forward. That's good. Now, Dana, through your podcast and, you know, your relationship coach, what have you seen, you know, causes injuries in relationships other than infidelity? What are some of the other problems that couples face. Yeah, I mean, most people come to me about communication issues, right? But I think it's more deeper than that. I think it's really a connection issue. And when couples lose their connection, that's when the communication breaks down. Because in any relationship, you're going to have communication challenges. We have different personalities. We have different perspectives, different opinions. So it's not that we don't agree on the same thing, but it's we're not connected anymore. Mm -hmm. So there's this gap in between where we, where we once were and now where we are. And the truth is, is that disconnection and relationships is actually the default. A lot of couples think, you know, that something weird is happening, but I give this analogy all the time about a canoe on a lake. If there's a canoe on a lake beside a dock, but it's not tethered to the dock, just through the gentle breezes of life, that canoe is going to begin to drift away. And if it's not brought back to the dock and then tied to the dock, it will forever drift away. And so that's how what happens in marriages a lot of times. It's not necessarily the big bad things, the infidelity, the financial 
betrayal. It's not those things. It's the, you didn't kiss me when you went to work. And so now I'm offended, but I'm not going to share that with you. I'm just going to hold that as resentment. And then you came home and you didn't thank me for the dinner that I cooked. So now I've got bitterness towards you, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to hold it. And over time, that erodes the connection. And then you have two strangers in a relationship and they're trying to figure out what happened. You just drifted way off from the dock. So my work that I do on the podcast as a marriage coach is I'm helping couples to reconnect. What brought you together? Revelation 2 talks about, obviously, this is a, a a church, a church that uh, this letter was written to, but it talks about going back and doing the things that you did at first. And there's so many times in marriage that we just forget, like those little things that brought us together. What was it that really attracted you to your spouse? What was the, were those little nice things that mm -hmm. they used to do for you? Go back and do those things again, and then you'll start to see your connection starts to grow. And then, yeah, you're still going to have conflict, but now you can approach it as a team, as a connected team, mm -hmm. instead of these two disconnected partners. That's good. And one thing um, I was, I think I was telling you all before when we were talking upstairs, this show, I watched uh, couples therapy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But one thing that I noticed, uh, there was one particular woman who, to me, I kept trying to figure out why was she so extreme with everything? Like if he didn't, you know, put the cup down right, right. she just would go off. But what we realized later on is that she had trauma Absolutely. that she never dealt with. And so how can people recognize that either their childhood or past trauma is playing a role in them. It may not be infidelity, but playing a role in damaging their marriage. Yeah, but listen, we bring all of that into the marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so it's important that we do the work I do together like a genogram with them. We talk about we talk about marriage and what marriages they've seen, generational marriages, how do they learn how marriage was going to go. So we start talking about that. Then we start talking about the damage in their personal life. So we got to do some individual stuff within the relationships. There are triggers that are going to happen in a marriage that has nothing to do with the marriage, mm -hmm. has to do with that trauma, has to do with um, the abandonment, it has to do with a whole bunch of stuff, but that comes into the marriage and we gotta work that out. Um, you just have to be able to take ownership of that, right? That moving that cup and in, in, if that's not the issue. The issue is that it's triggered you from something else, mm -hmm. but your spouse has to deal with that and it's not really fair for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not really fair. That's good. Yeah. There's so much that we've covered. Mm. We've had a great discussion, and I know we've only scratched the surface of the topic, and we hope something we said in our conversation has given you hope mm. for your marriage. So if you or someone you know is on the brink of calling it quits, we want to take the next few minutes to minister to you, and Dr. Cyrus is going to start us okay. off. What Dana said about these small events that happen in Song of Songs, in the Bible too, I wanna to say it's 15, I'm pretty sure, they talk about small foxes. Small foxes are these hurts and these injuries that happen in the relationship. And if you don't take care of those small foxes, it will ruin your, your vineyard. Um, so it's important that you connect weekly, have conversations about what has occurred during the week. And then when you have those conversations, the wonderful last question is, how can I love you better next week? That's the question. So these weekly kind of checkups and telling your truth of the week um, help so these things don't continue to grow. And that is the basis of a great relationship. I want to encourage you to have these conversations and be honest with your partner and grace and mercy, always grace and mercy. Thank you so much, Dr. Mm -hmm. Cyrus. You know, I think that when we look at marriage as this microcosm of God's relationship with the church, it kind of puts things in better perspective. We have the responsibility, if you're a Christian, we have the responsibility to reflect the image of God in the world. And God chooses to do that. One of the ways is through marriage. So oftentimes we'll talk to people and they're like, oh, my spouse is bringing the worst, worst out in me. And I'm like, great, because why do you want the worst to stay in you, right? You want that worst to come out. And so realizing that conflict, communication challenges, all of these things can be discipleship tools that God uses to make us more like him. So I just want to encourage those of you today who you maybe feel disconnected from your partner, your spouse, you may feel like you know what, maybe God isn't with me. First of all, God is always with you and the Holy Spirit will empower you to be the spouse that you are called to be. And if you are disconnected from your spouse, I do have a free quiz that I give on my website and it's really gonna help you to find out where you are in that communication journey and then more importantly, how you can find your way back to each other. 
Thank you so much, Dana. Now, there's a quote I once heard that says, would you rather be right or would you rather be married? Mm -hmm. And so much of marriage is, is being humble enough to know your goal is not to win every argument, but to win as a team, to win as one. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 through 10 says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. Then verse 12 says, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. You know, God is that third strand. So let him bind you together. If you're in a place where your marriage is dead, I wanna remind you that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He restores dead things. And I want to invite you to ask him into your heart and into your marriage. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you allowed me to watch this program today. And Lord, I just want to ask you into my heart. I pray, God, that you would be my Lord and my Savior. I repent of my sins, my mistakes. And Lord, I just want to put my trust and faith in you and the work that you did on the cross that I can't do. I thank you that you rose again, and because you did, I can rise again. And in my marriage, God, I pray that you'd restore what is broken. I pray that you would restore hope. I pray, Lord, that you would make it come alive again and know that you are that third strand that, that ties me and my spouse together. And because of you, we have a hope and we have a future. And so, Jesus, I just say yes to you today. I put my faith in you, and I pray, God, that you would just restore hope and faith in my heart. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Well, if you'd like to know how to have a personal relationship with Jesus, please message us on our international number on WhatsApp. We have prayer counselors standing by to pray with you. For our viewers in the United States and in Europe, please call us using the numbers on the screen. All our contact details are also listed on our website. So don't go anywhere. We have more truth, power, and inspiration for you after this. Call us at 0300-140-0067 or visit cbneurope.com forward slash TPI. Welcome back. Don't forget that you can be part of the TPI family by going to our website and clicking on the Join the Community tab. Please follow us on Instagram or YouTube at TPI Zone and drop a comment or a prayer request with the hashtag TPI Pray. We want to pray for you and see God move in your life. I want to thank our guests, Dana Shea Williams and Dr. Cyrus Williams. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so You're much. Thank yes. Now I want to leave you with a quote and it says this, a happy marriage is the union of two good forgivers. From all of us here on TPI's Everyday Woman, Goodbye and God bless. Bye. Bye.